We're now all set to bring to you a fireside chat on MedTech's role in accelerating digital health to increase patient access and deliver efficient healthcare. Telling us more about digital as an enabler of value-based healthcare, our industry veterans. It is such a pleasure to have with us our panel moderator, Dr. Rana Mehta, healthcare industry leader, partner, PwC India, in conversation with Dr. Harsh Mahajan, founder, Mahajan Imaging. It is such a pleasure to see both of you right here very soon. We will also be joined by Ms. Amit Paliwal, Program Director in the German Social Security Program, German International Corporation. Let's look forward to this very, very interesting fireside chat. Over to you, Dr. Mehta. Thank you, Isha, and uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, it's again an honor to have uh, Dr. Mahajan here. And uh, uh, I think the world's changed a lot in the last three years. And uh, I think uh, where digital would have been in 10 years probably got capitalized in 10 months, very similar to what we had with the vaccine. And I think, uh, you know, uh, over a period of time, what's now become important in a digital era is the data. Uh, you know, previously uh, you were rich if you had land, you then became rich if you had industry. Uh, but now I think it's clearly data which is there. We probably moved out into a, a digital era uh, without even knowing how important it is. Uh, I think it clearly brings out that uh, you always only had access to technology, which was either by going to a doctor, going to a hospital, going to a care specialist. But today, I think that care can come home uh, in a digital format. It also enables us to have healthcare, which is 24 by seven. And I think that access to care has changed. But I think in healthcare, we often, uh, you know, like everybody says, you know, technology is the answer. You know, but what's the question? And we are actually grappling with what are the pain points that really need to be addressed here. And I think no one's better equipped to answer that uh, than Dr. Mahajan, uh, who's had a very long career looking at how medtech has evolved and this whole evolution. How medtech, uh, which, which was just limited to a box, is now suddenly having a layer which makes it intelligent. But I think it's the time when we can really put in those building blocks, which will make sure that we provide accessible and affordable care to you know, 1.4 billion people. So Dr. Mahajan, how have you seen this evolution happen? And what are some of those building blocks we should think now, uh, because we have everything going for us as a country? Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Doc Mehta. Uh, thank you for having me on this fireside uh, chat. And as you very rightly said, I think uh, India, and many other countries around the globe are poised now uh, because of the pandemic, which has really shrunk the time which it would have taken otherwise to bring digital healthcare to the forefront. We realized because of shortage of healthcare personnel, doctors, nurses, hospital beds, uh, since many systems got overwhelmed, during the pandemic, that uh, there was no way that you could reach a hospital, get a bed and be treated. It had to be done remotely. And that's where, you know, physicians who till now had been rather skeptical about an online consult, uh, not feeling comfortable about the fact that it would work. And similarly, the patient without that touch on the shoulder and a face-to-face -face meeting, I think both sides were pretty uncomfortable uh, in, in uh, uh, saying that this would work. But what the pandemic brought home is the fact that there was no alternative. You had to do it. And that's where we saw that it worked. Even with the patients of uh, COVID who had uh, oxygen saturation of 80, 85%, uh, which is rather low, they had to be perforce treated at home. And many of them did well uh, with a doctor's instruction 
over the phone with home health care providers going there having you know not always a nurse but a nurse helper uh, in the home uh, providing uh, home care and uh, so i think uh, what the pandemic has done is shrunk that time tremendously brought a fact to the fore that telemedicine whether over the phone whether over zoom whether over some other medium uh, you know uh, whatsapp was a very commonly used tool it works and thankfully also in march of 2020 the government of india which was pretty awake to the entire situation brought in the telemedicine act making all of this legal actually many healthcare professionals did not know that provision of healthcare or advice or a prescription over the phone or over these mediums was illegal in this country and it's only after this act came into being that it is legal and i think uh, uh, the uh, provision of access in areas where there is a shortfall and there's a tremendous shortfall would per force come through digital means and the national digital health mission is uh, again something which the uh, government has thought of and in conjunction in partnership with the private sector i think this is the way that we'll be able to provide the uh, universal health care to the masses in our country especially those in rural areas in tier 3 tier 4 uh, uh, towns and frankly if you look there are dark areas of healthcare provision even in our tier 1 and tier 2 even in the metros you know there are uh, areas which are still dark and and so across the board i think we will have to think of amalgamating digital health into the overall healthcare system in this country be it public or private or in partnership with each other yeah so uh, dr mahajan uh, excellent and i think the you know that you uh, they can't roll it back so one of the things i think it's it's now providing us uh, a lot of data and healthcare does throw you know some of the largest uh, data amongst all the industries uh sites where we can really act uh is something uh, you know we now need to provision for i think the leaders uh, on the ai space in healthcare have predominantly been china and the united states uh what and uh, say that you know we have all this data but today this data is going to actually make sense for all our citizens uh dr mahajan you're on mute yeah yeah we can hear so, you so uh what you say is right predominantly uh, data usage especially for development of artificial intel- uh, intelligence algorithms uh, the major work is happening in the us and china and uh, you know in this country with a population of 1.4 billion uh, we do believe that there's a lot of data that we already have but this to some extent may be a myth a handwritten prescription uh, a, a, a lab system or a hospital system where the lab doesn't talk to the hospital the hospital system doesn't talk to different hospitals within itself and uh, uh, frankly a lot of what we do currently in our country is non digital and that probably may provide us uh, a, a, a reason and a impetus to leapfrog we see in the west that even in the large very well developed high end healthcare systems the hospitals may not speak to each other because one uh, hospital has a 
certain HIS system, which was uh, started 20 years ago, another hospital may have something which is absolutely different. So this is where India, which is still pretty primitive in digitization within the healthcare uh, sector, may be able to bring in a, a uniform, systematic, system which is adopted across the entire healthcare continuum. Remember, it's not just the hospital systems or the hospitals themselves or the labs and the diagnostic centers, but there is so much more to it. There are single doctor clinics, there are polyclinics, there are, uh, you know, district hospitals, uh, medical colleges, primary health centers, CHCs, all of them need to be brought into one whole. And this is where I think, uh, 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 just as we did in uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the, the cell phones, which are ubiquitous now. Similarly, I feel this is a moment in history when we can leapfrog and the shortcoming that we have had over the years where we've lagged behind maybe some of our Western counterparts this may provide a opportunity where not too much change may be required for adoption of a new uniform system of healthcare, uh, digital healthcare. Now, coming to the fact uh, uh, that, of course, US and China lead in AI, but in India, the entrepreneur, the two people who came out of IIT and sat together and built something this is not unknown and uh, i think even in our country there are quite a few academic institutions as well as small entrepreneurs you know a group of two three four people together as as well as uh, you know people like us who've been in the industry have diagnostic centers or labs uh, you know we are trying to build our own algorithm Terms, trying to build platforms for which would be for use at a global level and and there are several examples you know of uh, you know startups which have been able to raise uh, capital to actually go the whole hog to take it forward and uh, so the opportunity really exists and there are uh, there is talent within this country and somehow we need to bring these people together so that uh, experiments from the bench can actually be taken uh, to the clinic and uh, this can be done i think and if data can be harnessed in a useful way you know we tend to say that there is so much data in this country but at the same time there's so little data because if we talk of say radiology you may save your chest x-rays or your MRIs or CT scans, and you may save your reports, which have been there, but you may not be able to bring them together. That's how you save them. So that's where we need to bring in a uniform system across the board. And maybe we could be leaders in the world in doing this. We could develop a system here, which can then be taken to the world. No, I think uh, brought out a very important point about AI and the algorithms and how it's changing. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, there is a startup which just looked at x-rays and without, they scanned over a million x-rays. But there are lesions in the lung which no radiologist had looked at, you know. So rather than, uh, you know, having an x-ray when you have a symptom, these were people who later were told you had an x-ray, you know, maybe it was preventive. But, you know, this lesion got mixed out. That, uh, you know, being a radiologist, artificial I'd intelligence. Like, uh, you to pause here because there have been, uh, uh, you know, in literature and in lay uh, press, a lot of claims that have been made by groups across the globe, not only in our country, but across the globe where people have claimed we have 98% accuracy and we found things which the radiologists could not. Actually, these have been claims. And uh, frankly, at the end of the system, you would still require 
a radiologist to be sitting looking maybe as you develop more and more uh, you know uh, uh, trust in a ai algorithm you could let uh, uh, maybe 50% go without a human being uh, looking at them but that day is not here and many of these claims that have been made uh, uh, have been have turned out to be false claims having said that i don't say that this will not happen there is a lot of brain power and money power that is being used in developing ai algorithms for different uh, uh, diseases for different modalities be it a x ray chest or a ct of the head or a mri of the head a mri of the knee our own uh, you know carpal.ai uh, is working in developing a platform so that these ai algorithms can actually be validated they can be tested they can be fine tuned before they are brought into clinical practice remember uh, even one case going away uh, with a wrong diagnosis is uh, is a problem and and so that's where uh, i think some of these claims have turned out to be incorrect and uh, uh, you know it's in the months and years to come we will see if you look around the world there are thousands of ai developers those who develop ai algorithms be it individual developers startups be it large companies like ibm g siemens philips or be it academic institutions like the harvards the iits the stanfords thousands being developed but when you look at the other end how many of them are actually in use those are very few and that's because trust in them is still lacking and that's where we need to work to ensure that these algorithms actually are as good as the claims about them and this is where you know we in india uh, hope to play a role through development of this platform which will help the ai developers develop their algorithms uh, with small tools which help them after they are developed in a seamless manner they can be uploaded into the platform you test them you validate them a claim which may be 90% maybe 50% correct in one hospital 70% correct in another hospital we know that for developing ai algorithms which will work across the board you need heterogeneous data you need x ray films from say a siemens g philips and and so many others you may need uh, uh, you know racial uh, changes may change the data and so all of these things need to be looked at need to be built in and then in a seamless manner be provided to hospital systems to radiology clinics so that they can be used and and uh, uh, that day still is is uh, uh, actually not here very little of what is developed is in day to day clinical practice but i'm sure there will be use of this in uh, a practice not very far uh, away and this will help in two ways this will accelerate the turnaround times this will improve overall accuracy of the reports this will lower healthcare cost this will work as a radiologist or a doctor's assistant to speed up the whole thing and there may be cases where a doctor may miss something remember ai algorithms have no emotions you know it is well known that a doctor who's fresh in the morning may do a great job if the same x rays were given to him in the evening he may miss one or two uh, pathologies uh, because we tire we we may be emotionally distraught at some point of time why whereas ai algorithms are not so uh, ai acting as a doctor's assistant will do a lot and we do hope that this will also reduce healthcare costs also in underserved areas of our country or in other parts of the world be it africa 
be it other parts of Asia, where there is a shortage of, a, of radiologists, AI could play a major role in, say, talking about chest x-rays. Just differentiating normal x-rays from abnormal would be great so that a radiologist who is in short supply needs to look only at the abnormals. And algorithms are already there, which even tell you what the abnormality is. And I'm sure in the months to come, these will be in use, but we have to go one step at a time. We have to be cautious because if we over amplify the usefulness of these algorithms, uh, we may actually, uh, 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 it may work out to be detrimental overall to the use of AI and uh, uh, in clinical practice. No, excellent. I think, uh, Dr. Marjan, you gave us a very good reality check. Uh, so while uh, it's a problem, uh, we say data is the new oil. And, uh, you know, for the oil, you need a new and uh, the chips are the new internal combustion engine. So that's increasing the compute power. And sure, like you said, uh, it's the time uh, we will get there. Uh, very briefly, I think we run out of how to see the role of the radiologist a decade later. You know, today you were saying he needs judgment, empathy, creativity. What are the three skill sets he'll need in 2030? Those three skills are basic skills that he would continue to need. I feel that uh, in the years to come, the radiologist will have to evolve into a total diagnostician because there is so much data coming out of different modalities, be it a path lab, be it uh, you know the histopathology, be it genomics, be it biochemistry, be it microbiology. You have nuclear medicine scans, you have uh, radiology scans, all of these, you know, you can't expect the clinician sitting in his OPD be able to digest so much of data. So the era of the future is the era of integrated diagnostics. And I feel two things are going to happen. The radiologist is going to adopt AI and become better than what he is. He will become more accurate. He will become faster. If today he reports 50 scans, he may be able to report 250 in the years to come. Number two is that even clinicians, a neurologist with AI helping him may be able to read a CT scan and an MRI. And so this is where uh, there is a word of caution for the radiologists that there are going to be tough battles between clinicians empowered with AI and radiologists. So some chunk of the work is going to get taken away from radiologists. And thirdly, it is imperative for the radiologist who for the last 25 years has been used to digital data images to evolve into this new role of the integrated diagnostician uh, for want of a better word and and this i tell you will be a new field of medicine and the radiologist is best suited to evolve into this no i i think uh, so so i think it sounds really positive very exciting times because uh, i think all parts of the stake all stake the, the radiologist wins because he's more empowered the clinician can make faster decisions. And most importantly, I think uh, who we all work for, the patient, because healthcare becomes more accessible, more affordable. Uh, thank you, Dr. Marjan. It was fascinating. We could still go on and on, but I know we've come to an end. And uh, I'd like to thank the organizers for having us on this really exciting session. Over to you, Isha.
Thank, Thank you, you very so much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Rana Mehta and Dr. Harsh Mahajan. It's been a pleasure listening to both of you, and it's been a very insightful uh, session right here. It's very kind of the two of you that you could join us here, talk about the future, because we really do believe the future is now bringing health innovations to the forefront, and something that both of you really do agree on. Up next will be yet another interesting fireside chat on combating coronavirus through technology, where our speakers and uh, session will. Uh, focus and throw light on fighting COVID-19 through digital innovation and transformation and how technology advancements have helped sailing through the pandemic and these really uh, difficult last 24 months role of diagnostics and a lot more in just a bit. So please do stay tuned. <laughs>